You're watching Down at the Barns, following the stories of people and their love of classic cars. Everything from restoration to electric conversion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. So hello, we're back with the stag. Uh, we've made quite a bit of progress, which I think Les is happy about. Um, we've positioned everything in the front of the car now. We've got a frame holding the motor, which bolts into original positions in the, under the, on the chassis. We've got the charger and the inverter mounted off that. We've got the motor in. We've got the radiator and condenser, because Les loves his air conditioning in an open top car. And we've got the AC compressor in here. So we've got everything sighted. Oh, and, and the uh, hydraulic power steering pump. Um, so I think we're at the point to go and get it powder coated, finished, and then looking at the final assembly, routing of cables and pipes. Because there's a lot of pipes underneath this car now with um, the air conditioning in there, the, um, all, all the cooling system. It, it gets quite complex up the front here. So we're gonna spend quite a bit of time trying to make sure that we route that neatly and safely so it doesn't chafe, etc. Really happy with the way the motor's gone in. That's positioned so we use the original prop shaft. Um, we're using a 120 kilowatt motor in here um, through a two to one reduction box. So we have 600 newton meters of the drive shaft. We've taken the whole motor frame mount back onto this steering um, position up the, up the front here. So whilst it's a little bit convoluted going back underneath the cross member it just means that we've got a positive position to, to bolt it into um, without compromising you know without without actually cutting into the car so here's the battery box a little bit lighter than it will be when it's uh, got all the uh, battery modules in it so there you, go, you can see it sits uh, in there it fills up the space we've actually pushed it slightly to, to the right of the, in the car to clear the steering column. But that's also given us space to fit the 12 volt battery. So we're gonna try and mount as much as we can onto the battery itself. Um, so we've got a 12 volt battery here. We've got the fuse box. We've got um, the controller all sighted on the battery because it just makes it easier to mount. Uh, we've also got um, this. So this is a power steering pump. Um, electrically operated, uh, we've got um, pressure out of here, we've got the return in here, electrical connection which is very simple, just power and uh, power and ground, uh, and then the reservoir in here. The nice thing about it is it's really compact compared to some of those that we've been, been using. The other nice thing about it is it's got a cover that, that absorbs a lot of the noise. So in a, in a petrol car, the noise of the power steering pump is masked really by, by the engine running. But in this car, you're sat at idle, you know, you, you're, you're sat at the traffic lights, you put a little bit of steering lock in and it whine, the, these, these motors whine quite a bit. So being able to take a lot of that noise out of it will refine the car even further. So we've, um, we've got brackets that, that, that rubber mount this just here next to the battery. Um, and then we plumb it straight into the, into the steering gear. So quite a nice, neat solution there. Um, that's the way we're going with the power steering. So last time we talked about where we we're going to put the charge port and we were going between the fuel filler at the back which would only really take the Type 2 but obviously Les has got absolutely everything on this car so it's going to have CCS and the only place that we really felt that we could put CCS without cutting the body is in the front here. So we've designed a bracket that will hold the Type 2 sorry, the Type 2 and CCS combined charge port. Um, we'll have to open the uh, bonnet and then plug in, but we're gonna try and keep it as low as possible so you don't need the bonnet fully open. Because you can imagine when you stopped at the motorway services, 
you don't really want to be opening the bonnet and then when you do open the bonnet you don't want it fully open because no doubt it's going to be raining and windy and horrible not that he's ever going to drive it in those conditions but it, <laughs> but knowing our luck it will be you don't have to have the bonnet fully open uh, so we'll be able to pull it back to some level of uh, closed um, we'll probably have to put a separate stay in as well we're not going to look in the rear that much at the moment the rear battery box is is finished it's off at the powder coaters and then we're going to go and build it glue it in the, in the boot of the car but you may have noticed it's got a pair of uh, exhaust pipes on the back there so les has been playing with that he's working on his sound system uh, and he's going to play it back through the exhaust so we've been trying to package all of that in the rear end of the car as well so uh yeah, it's, it's, this, this car is going to have so much technology in it, it's, it's going to be quite interesting to see how it all integrates together. Because that, that, that's the big challenge with this, because there's so much going on in the car. Uh, and you know, you've got to try and fit it all back in the original package. The, the big challenge with the car is pulling it all together and making it work harmoniously as one system. So getting that full vehicle integration which is one of the things that I really love about doing these cars, is making it all work harmoniously together. So, join us next time to find out how we're progressing with that and trying to pull the whole lot together. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook 